What's up guys and gals, welcome back to Pyrodactyls Unrest. If you've been interested in the game thus far, feel free to check it down in the description below. I've got all the download information if you wanted to get the game on Steam. For right now, let me give you a little bit of background information to let you know where we're at, because I know there is all kinds of stuff in this game to soak in. I mean, there is a lot of storyline flying at you. The first time I played this game, I very much kind of had just like facts. I couldn't remember who was who. There was just too much information to soak in. This time, I feel like I've got a pretty good handle on it, having played previously, but... We are inside the shoes right now of Bhagwan, a 38-year-old father of two who is a priest of Bankamundi and working directly under Ranvir. At the moment, he's tasked us with giving out bread. Now, what the game doesn't tell you is that this challenge right here, this is actually like a thing that you'll be graded on. So when you give out bread, there are going to be consequences later on with the way that... Ranveer sees you and whether or not you're worthy, whether your discretion is good enough for him to promote you. And so be careful. Make sure that you make the right decisions and think this through. Now, I am going to try and pick the proper choices. I don't necessarily remember the right choices. I'm thinking going through right here, I remember... I remember, I think, what the right choices are. So I'm going to do the right choices because I've played the game already and I screwed this challenge up the first time and I know what the right answers are because the game tells you after you screw it up. However, if you don't want a spoiler, don't watch this part. Do it on your own. Ignore this part right here. Skip it. In fact, skip this entire episode because this is basically what we're going to be working on for the next 25 minutes. If you don't want to know, don't watch this. I'll understand completely. Come back later and see what my decisions are. That'll be alright, but I don't want to ruin your playthrough. If you've already decided to play this game, save it for yourself. Really, savor it and save it. So over on the right-hand side, there's a bunch of Naga. We're not going to give them any bread. They're just going to beg for it. I think we got a new trait here. No, we didn't. Never mind. So in our inventory, we have three loaves. That's all we can give out. We can give out three loaves of bread. We've got our symbol of Baka Mundi. In our journal, we don't have anything else going on. All right. So basically what's going to happen right here is that we're going to have to pick who gets bread. And so you can run through all of these people. And every single person is going to be like, oh, I'm starving. That's pretty much it. Every single person. But if you mouse through, you'll see that some of these things are not like the others. So the people that are generically named are the red shirts. Those are the people you want to avoid. Whereas the old man, the sick man, and the child, I think, are the proper choices. And so let's talk to him. A loaf of bread, please. I can't find food. I can barely walk. I've never been this hungry in my life. Oh, how did it get like this? How can I go on like this? The sick man as well, I think, is the other right choice. Please, sir, just one loaf. Just one loaf, and I, I think I can make it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And then I think the final correct choice is a child. And under no circumstances should you give the bread to the Naga. That'll make Rodvir totally just grumpy with you. Don't do that. Oh, they all want it. Okay, so we'll give it to him. More! We need more, please! Well, I mean, one loaf between three children isn't much, but it's something. Priest, you look like you've got family. My contacts in the Mercs have a deal going. You get us 60 coins, and good men will look after your house when the violence goes down. What do you say? What violence? Ronvir's whole purpose is to keep peace and order. Ronvir's purpose is to make sure that when the city half kills the other half, he's still around. If you want your family to still be around, you'll have to make your own arrangements. I'll consider it. Coin for safety. Just think about it, yeah? Soon enough, you'll realize the only family you can save for sure is your own. That's another important decision right here for later on in the game. Because things are going to take a very, very nasty turn very soon. And you'll see the benefits and the detriments of this decision later on as well. Just saying. I'm just letting you know what the triggers are for later on in the game. Because I didn't see a lot of it coming the first time that I played. Let's go and talk to... Only a few months ago, we were carrying bread out into the slums. Now they see us carrying the bread in and our doors are mobbed in minutes. We need a new solution. So we can say that we can bring it straight from the kitchens. They say that this works well enough. It reminds people where the food comes from. That is true in the power hierarchy. That is a smart choice. Maybe Ronvir should take this opportunity to speak to the poorest slum dwellers. I'll go with the kitchen option. We tried that. Let's just th say that things came to a pass where Ronvir insisted on being on seeing each crate full with his own two eyes. Oh, speaking of which, Ronvir wanted to speak with you when you're finished. I think he was watching you through the doors. Sumit, I don't think, has anything else to say. I wonder if you'd like to talk about what happened out there. Passing out bread is one of the directest philosophical challenges that a new priest can face. Often, it takes them a few times to grasp the principles of who should be served first. You seem to know who I chose. Do you think I chose poorly? 
Actually, let's go with relaxed. Yes, I think I would like to discuss it with you. I was just about to say that I think you chose very wisely. Feeding the children took courage. No man likes to be made a fool, but when you're gambling with the lives of children, you must err in their favor. Same goes for feeding the sick. You must treat every human life with compassion, whatever the price. I have another task for you. It's more straightforward than choosing who gets bread and who does not, I should think. I need someone to go to the slums and distribute medicine to the sick and faithful. Prabal usually does this, but I'm afraid he's been badly injured this morning, so I need someone else to step up. What would I be required to do? The job is a simple one. Find any who seem to be sick, ask them to swear by the three tenets of Baka Mundi as recorded in your notes. If they will, then give them the medicine. If they will not, use your judgment, Bhagwan, but I'd advise caution. We have a limited number of lives to save, and we owe it to the city to ensure that they are righteous ones. Will you do this? I bypassed on this. Sure, I will. Last time I played, I didn't take this challenge, so I want to see what happens. Take heart, Bhagwan. We are Bankamundi's soldiers. Because we do what others won't, we have his strength and his respect. Return to me when you've finished. He removes the last of six small terracotta files from a nearby rack and puts them into a pouch for you. So we've got six medicine. Our journal, we haven't gotten anything new. It looks like we've got a bunch of people to talk to. Oh wow, we're going to be all over the slums. There are people everywhere. Okay. Well, there's a lot of people to talk to. And so we'll make our decision slowly but surely. Let's go ahead and talk to... It says we can talk... He's sending you out? Bogwan, don't risk your life out there. If you wander around too long, those animals will tear you apart. Listen to me. The slum market is at the western flank after you leave the temple. You'll find someone there who will buy all the medicine from you. He'll distribute it for you, and maybe you'll have enough set by to take care of your children if the worst happens. You say that like you've done it. I have, and I don't regret it. It's where it will end up anyways, you know. I'm sorry, but it's true. Half the sick people in the slums are fakers, and half are just too desperate to let a guaranteed mouthful of bread slip through their fingers, even if their blood's on fire and their limbs are rotting. Anyways, good luck out there. Don't take any chances. I'm sincerely worried for Bhagwan's safety right now. I'm not really sure what's going to happen. I'm not the best manager for this. Nothing to say there. There's always too many of them, and they're all starving. And if I don't feed some of them, they'll die, and they say things, just terrible things. I'm sorry, Bhagwan. I always pass out bread, and today I just... I couldn't do it. Just get some rest. Well, I understand. You'll see for yourself soon enough. You'll see. Honestly, I can... Well, I can sympathize. I can definitely sympathize. Let's get out here. I mean, I'm worried that Bogwan's gonna die and his children are gonna... I mean, I'm, I'm worried about Bogwan in the first place, but I'm also worried about his children. No one should end up an orphan. Especially because of mob violence and stupidity. I mean, for any reason at all, really, but... Still. Out we go. Let's have a little look here. There's a merchant. Looking for donations? I suppose I can spare a little. She reaches into a purse and withdraws a few coins from the dozen within and hands them to you. Here. I could say, every coin you give me feeds a child, couldn't you spare more? Hold nothing back, this is a matter of life and death. Thank you, this may yet save a life. I don't think it's ni- I- I mean, in dire times... How- who am I to judge what a merchant is giving? I mean... So, I understand that if you're someone, a humanitarian, that's trying to help other people and you know that somebody is of means and they have lots of money, that you would try and press them to just get a little bit more to save people that have nothing. But at the same time, you run the risk of them just being like, no, and not giving you anything, then and taking their donation back because you've then offended them. I mean, it wouldn't be a nice thing to do on their part. But, I mean, some people have bigger prides than others, so I think I'm just going to take what we can get and then we'll move on. Thank you, this may yet save a life. I'm glad to give anything I can. Okay, so it's like four coins that she gave us. It's not much. I used to admire priests, you know. Well, I was a lot younger man back then. <laughs> Anyways. It's the baldness. I think that's what did it. Let's go with the... Mer Although it does help out. Come for food and money? I have to say, I don't see the point. Everyone west of Shyam's line is going to starve to death someday. At least I have a chance of saving my family. 
You can say that some will starve, but it's not nearly as hopeless as you say. There's no good pragmatic excuse for turning your back on people in need. It's harsh, but you have a point. Perhaps you should keep what's yours. I'm gonna go with number two because I do firmly believe that if you've got a lot of money, society has put you on a pedestal for a reason. And if you have a lot of money, it's then your societal duty to give back to the people that made you what you are. I mean, we all don't just become rich on our own. A lot of people support and vouch for us. And, you know, it's a long journey to get there. And to a certain extent, I think that when it comes to economic value, if you create a product, it's a good product and you deserve to be rewarded for it. But people chose your product as well. And it's, it's good to remember that people chose your product and people vetted for you and vouched for you and said that yours was the best. And giving back to those people, I think, is always a good thing. I mean, at a certain point, I heard an artist say one time that, like, everybody needs to get their own pie, but does everybody need to have, like, 5, 10, 15 pies when other people don't have any pies? And I, th I, I think that's a very good way of looking at the world, so there's no good pragmatic excuse for turning your back on people in need. And how is it not? This drought shows no sign of ending soon. Between what little we've managed to grow and what we could bring in from the Naga merchants, we don't have enough food for everyone. So why give what little food exists to those who can't afford it? You can say that, then I won't force my point. There are those who are starving that don't have that luxury, and if you want things to go back to normal, you'll keep the, rums from, the slums from rioting, which means feeding them. That's really kind of the truth of the situation, and I, it's kind of sad that this guy can't see it in front of his own face, that if you're the only rich guy on the top of the hill surrounded by thousands and thousands of poor people with nothing, who do you think they're going to come for first? I, I, I'm just saying from, from a self-preservation standpoint, if you're not going to do it from a humanitarian standpoint, think about it from a self-preservation standpoint. Do you really want to be the guy that everybody says he never helped us even though he could? I mean, they're going to tear you apart when they come for you. It's going to be bad. And so at least if, you, if you're going to look at it from a selfish perspective, think of it as saving yourself in the future, if nothing else. At least that's how I would try and convince this individual. And so that's what I'm going to go with because I think that's going to speak most to his mindset. So it's coercion. Is it pay them off to keep them from your doors another day? I see how it is. I never thought about it that way. Well, maybe I'll have a talk with Ronvir and see if he can recommend any ways to stay particularly well protected. Something went gading when we did that. Damn, I was hoping he would give us a donation so that I could pay to protect my kids. I'm not gonna lie right now, I'm trying to protect my children. And that's that's real talk. Let's see, we'll talk to everybody and see what happens, just to make sure. No priests, no visitors, keep moving. Hey, how you doing, priestess? Bok Wan, right? Making the rounds or just taking a break? Making the rounds, just finished up my work at the temple. Hard, isn't it? Half of them see you as a savior, and the other half see you as a target. Out here, they think we're enabling a district full of crazed killers, but at least they're civil about it. Well... We can say that the slums aren't bad, they're at the mercy of bad people. And they say, what do you say to that? Or you can say, I can't say that I, or I can't say that I blame them, the slums are dangerous. And what do you say to that? I say it's easy to let children starve when they're on the other side of a line of mercenaries. I say all life is sacred, even the ugly kind. I'd rather feed a stranger who lives to break the necks of a thousand fat merchants than let him starve on principle alone. That's a... Wow. Soak in that sentence for a second. That's a tremendous sentence right there. I really do enjoy the fact that the writers of this game have a very, very... They have a solid command of conspiracy. And they have a solid command of philosophy as well. They really do imbue that into a lot of the characters, which is one of the reasons why I decided to show this game off on the channel, even though I wasn't sure that it was the right fit, is that some of the lines in this game, you read them, and you read them two or three times, and they really, you sit and you think for a moment. Like, you don't click an option, you just sit in there and you think about them for a few minutes, and you can feel your neurons sort of rearranging slightly, and you can feel your brain sort of struggling with, like, whether that opinion is right, wrong, or whether you agree, or whether you disagree. And because the game doesn't give you the option to argue with this person, it forces you just to deal with it in your own head and then move on. But I'd rather feed a stranger who lives to break the necks of a thousand fat merchants than let him starve on a principle alone. Interesting. And please don't tell anybody I said that. Oh, man. The part about all of being sacred, the broken-necked merchants. Eh, priests hang together. Don't worry, I won't. Yes, I'd appreciate that. I don't know that it'd get me in trouble, but who wants to take chances? Anyways, good luck out there. Sometimes you gotta look out for your own, just in case. I mean, we all share the same temple. I'm not trying to get shivved in the temple showers. So let's find some sick people. So this is the mercenary line. So basically, the way that it's arranged, if you're not really grasping how things are going, there's a mercenary named Shyam who has been hired to keep peace 
for the rich people, and he's made a blockade in between the poor area and the rich area. Jadeep's men are tasked with keeping the peace in the slums, and so you've got the line of mercenaries, which are Shyam's men, and you've got Jadeep's men, which are these guys in red, who are meant to keep the peace out in the slums. And so you've got Ranvir, who's the head of the temple, and he's in control of everybody. He's basically got everybody on the payroll. He's paying Shyam, he's paying Jadeep, he's basically got everything on lock. Rhea, who was our ambassador from the previous episodes, she now works at the tent, or she's now an advisor to Ron Veer, but really she's been rendered ineffectual due to politics and keeping the Naga silenced in the council. Basically a lot of intrigue in this game that I like. Is it that time again? Very well. I'll have my servants bring some food over to the temple. Anything to keep those soldiers of Jadeep in fighting shape. So we can say thank you, I'm sure your donations help a lot of people. We can say JD's men are no soldiers, they're more like an overgrown gang. Or we can say the slums have no soldiers, if anything, JD's men are guards and protectors. I'm just gonna, nope, I'm not even gonna pick that scab. Thank you, I'm sure your donations help a lot of people. I'm happy to hear that, but honestly, it's in all our best interest. Give some slum dr give some slum dweller spears, god, there's a tongue twister, some slum dweller spears at regular meals, and suddenly they're not slum dwellers anymore, they're ours. If it ever comes to open violence, we'll need all the help we can get. See, this guy's thinking about it the way that I was trying to convince the other guy to donate. I mean, whatever way that we end up getting our way out of these people, they can think about things and rationalize them however they want as long as the donations keep coming in. Ah, you're new. It's useful for old priests to change temples like this. Or is... Oh, there's an it right there, that's why that sentence... Is it usual for old priests to change temples like this? I'm not from around here, I don't understand all of Bimra's traditions. So we can say it's complicated, we can say that it's not usual, or we can say that it's usual. I'm gonna say that it's usual. To be a priest in Bimra is a lifelong calling. You needn't serve a temple, and if you do, you may choose which. This is interesting. Where I'm from, there's only one god to serve. Priest spends the, the, priests spend their whole... Wait, a priest spends his whole life since he becomes a priest at a young age, teaching others about that god. So you need an A right there, and then... You need commas right there and right there so that it... Yeah, okay. So anyways, the grammar is a little bit weird. I'm willing to bet that this game was translated from another language. Because while a lot of it comes through very solidly, sometimes you've got some awkward sentences that just don't make sense within the confines of grammatical rules. So a priest spends his whole life, comma, since he becomes a priest at a young age, comma, teaching others about that god. Seems strange to change temples. Like, you're cheating on your calling, yeah? Like, you're admitting you're wrong. That's not really how it works here. The temples aren't in competition. They're part of the same wisdom. Maybe that's all he wants. You know him more than I do. I just carry boxes. I've always got people questioning you in this game. Ah, you're one of Ronvir's, aren't you? Rare to see one of you all the way out here. Well, we go where we're needed. The crates need lifting and the good needs handing out, you mean. Don't be offended, I'm just sometimes confused why Ron Veer is seemingly every one of his priests doing menial chores. Why does he just hire suitable men from the slums? Hiring some and not others would divide the slums, that's his worst fear. Perhaps he doesn't trust them with his bread and medicine, us we can trust. Well, obviously you know that's not true because people are selling the medicine to the black market and giving bread out to friends and things like that. I think it's probably this one right here. I respect how hard you all work, and I wish you good fortune in keeping the slums peaceful. I just hope the bread crusts aren't the only tools that Ronvir has. But I'm sure you all know what you're about. Please don't let me sit here and talk your ear off if you've got work you should be doing. You know, I have to ask, what is it you people have against the Naga? I don't have anything personally against them. You realize how lucrative trade with the Naga is for us. Half the decent food that comes into the city is through our connections with the Empire. I mean, I don't like the creepy bastards. Who does? But having a Naga counselor has been the best thing for Bimra in a long time. I don't disagree. You tell Ronvir the next time you see him, coming from a real man of wealth and intelligence, the Naga are more useful to us than a hundred human slum rats. Yeah, I do agree with the treaty, and I understand, but you have to think about it from the perspective of people from the slums. The people in the slums have never taken an economics course. They don't understand that trade makes the world go around. All they see is kind of foreign invaders, I guess. And so, while I will 100% agree that their outlook is wrong, you can see the perspective that it comes from. The fact of the matter is, they just 
they don't understand the way that trade works and how this all kind of will fix our problems. Lucrative trade with an empire that has a ton of food when we have a ton of natural resources, it just makes sense. They don't have resources, we don't have food. The trade makes sense and it's beneficial to all parties. And that in exchange for letting some of their... Basically, the problem is because the Naga have an overpopulated society, part of the agreement is they would send us food if we allowed some of their refugees to come here. And that's what's causing the problem. Unfortunately, now that the king and the queen have been killed, the Naga aren't really sending that much food anymore. Let's talk to Jadeep. I bet he's got something. To his men, don't kill anyone human if you can help it. Dead men won't help us and neither were their families. Hang on. Isn't that just like a priest? I didn't mean to interrupt, you said, just as you came out to me to interrupt. How about you bother somebody else? Or, better yet, do what you're supposed to and run Ron Veer's errands for him. I certainly didn't mean to offend you. I'll go now. Shakes his head and turns back to his men. Like I said, you're supposed to be making friends out there. Believe me, the day isn't too far off where you'll want as many friends as you can get. Hey, hey, priest. Don't harm your brothers, don't take from your brothers, and what was the last one? Protect your street? Can I get some medicine? I'm sorry, are you sick? Do I look sick? Because let me tell you, I feel like my guts are rotting from the inside. I'm not sure if I can help you for now, but maybe later. Yeah, I don't think he's gonna fool me. So we got a slum ganger. Hopefully the guards got our back. Hey, priest, what are you doing down here? You don't look well, are you sick? Nah, I mean, I don't know. I don't think so. Forget it. With questions like that, you should always divert. So if anybody's ever being confrontational with you, or clearly trying to figure out if you're a mark or not, you should always divert the sentence to something else that's on your own terms. So basically, you take the command of the conversation where he's dictating the questions being asked, and you make it a situation where you're asking the questions. You can do the same thing with interviews with people that are higher up in a company than you. Shows initiative. They tend to like that sort of stuff. No, I mean, I don't know. I don't think so. Forget it. I see, but something's wrong, isn't it? Would you like to talk about it? No. Well, I mean, maybe. Can you just tell somebody I'm sorry for me, please? I can't do it myself. I don't think he'd speak with me. I will... Uh, we can ask him to open up. We can be compassionate. So we can, we can ask no questions and we can just offer the apology for him. I need more information before I do this. Slow down. If you'll open up with me about what you did, I think I can help you. You want me to talk about it? Alright, well I guess I should, right? We pool the food that we get, we take some of it from people, buy it from others, anything to keep our families together, right? Only we get this new guy and we catch him taking way, way more food than he has a right to, so I cut him open. I had to. There was no way around it. But he had a kid brother and sister. That's probably why he was taking so much food in the first place and... Well, without him they didn't make it. I don't know what else I would have done. I mean, there's just not enough food for everybody, right? Who knows who would have starved if we had let him go over his share, but that just, it doesn't make me feel any better. And so we can ask him if he actually realizes what he's done, but I think he does realize what he's done. That's kind of a foolish, I mean, that's, that's a dickish statement because very clearly he realizes what he's done. Your situation has forced you to make some bad choices. If I were you, I would leave your gang immediately. Please, just, would you go to the girl's father and tell him I'm sorry? I can't face him myself. He killed me as soon as I began to speak. I'll tell you where you I'll tell you where he lives. This is something that honestly you took a man's children from him. I mean I'm not sure that he's going to accept the apology from anybody but you if he accepts it all. I mean, I wouldn't begrudge him, you know. I, I wouldn't begrudge him revenge. I mean, if somebody killed one of my family members, I'm not sure that I could be the bigger man to to, to forgive somebody for something like that. That's just me personally coming from my corner. Somebody kills your family member, I... Or causes your family member to die indirectly, I don't know. It's true, it'll only mean something though if it comes from his mouth. A look of defeat comes over him and he sinks to his haunches. He appears to have given up entirely. Go, just go. I mean, I don't want to call the guy a coward, but... He needs to apologize in person. He needs to offer that, I mean kill a man's children I mean seriously it's the least you can do if you're going if you feel sorry about it and you do feel absolute remorse it's not gonna bring his children back but at least be a man and go talk to him and apologize and take whatever your punishment is 
Don't kill, steal, protect something, kill Naga, please. My sister is badly ill. I just need one dose. How long has she been sick? Days? A week? Please, she's the only thing I have left anymore. How did you lose your family? What? Why are you asking? You do have medicine, don't you? Yes, I do. I'm just trying to understand who I'm giving it to. You're giving it to a man who's almost lost everything and can't stand to lose anything else. What more do you need to know? I'm not sure. Forget this. If I want them, I said I'll help him later, but forget this. If I want medicine, I know where I can get it reliably. Go ahead and give it to somebody else, and when they sell it, I'll find a way to buy it. Why is a great man like Ronvir cursed with such stupid priests? Hmm. Uh, I don't know about the teachings of Ronvir or anything, but I was just... I've, I've had this sickness for a while now, and I think it's time I did something about it. Do you have anything for me? I'm sorry, but there are others worse off than you. You can stand and walk for one. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Sorry. I'm sorry. You need to be sorry, I mean. I knew someone would come. The woman coughs up blood. I need some medicine, please. I can't keep the tenants straight, but I swear I'll make it up to your temple if I can just survive a little bit longer. Okay, she's coughing up blood. That's a pretty good indicator. She looks at you bleary-eyed and nods. Hey, hey, new priest, listen, my people own the streets to the west. Go there and you'll be killed. What? Have I done something wrong? Not at all. I just wanted to talk. Can't. Don't want rumors getting around that I work with you people. Why would Inaga work for Ronvir? Can't talk. Please go. He said not to go to the west or we're going to end up dead. One thing I do know is that Ronvir loses his shit, like, entirely if you give stuff to Naga people, so... Unfortunately, I've got to keep my family safe. I think we're about at the point where I could break off the episode anyways reliably. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerd Castle as we hunt for more sick people that we can give medicine to. Take care out there, everybody, and I do. While I do feel that I messed up with that first guy, we'll try and do our best with our discretion later on. I mean, I wanted to come back after listening to everybody's case. That was what I wanted to do, but I guess that's not an option. He sort of lost his temper on us, so it's disappointing that I've already failed one of the challenges, but we'll do what we can with what we have. I'll see you in the next episode.